Hi, my name is Steve Albert. I'm professor and chair of the Department of Behavioral and Community Health Sciences in the Graduate School of Public Health. It's a great pleasure to welcome you to fall 2020 at our university in the Graduate School. Of course, we're in some very strange times and uh, unfortunately not able to connect in the hallways and in classrooms the way we usually do. However, we're doing the next best thing, which is to continue learning uh, if we can get together in other contexts, but at least uh, keep our educational mission strong and uh, provide the training that I know you want. That's why you're here. Uh, a little bit about me. Uh, I've been 30 years in this business. I have a, uh, a PhD in anthropology from the University of Chicago. I later went on to get a master's of science degree in epidemiology at Columbia University. Uh, I've spent a good amount of time in public health, but indirectly. I started out in the medical school in a department of neurology, in fact, in the center in neuroepidemiology, where I was charged with studying the functional significance of mild cognitive deficits. That is, when uh, a loss of the ability to remember things or uh, plan uh, an activity, when that would matter for difficulty living independently, driving, uh, managing a checkbook, making a long distance call, things of this sort. And uh, the anthropological perspective was very useful for that because we needed to think very carefully about behavior and how people manage daily affairs. I did many studies of HIV, uh, dementia, uh, neuromuscular diseases, but eventually I got tired of studying the pathologies that were mostly associated with aging and wanted to move more into prevention and looking at what allows us to have good life and health in, at older ages. So I moved over to public health, first at Columbia and then at the University of Pittsburgh, and it's been wonderful. I really feel uh, public health is the place to be. We study populations, prevention, all looking to find levers we can pull, pull for policy changes, and uh, what better thing can we do to improve the well-being and health of a population? Uh, it's terrific. But, you know, for BCHS, my department, we're not only looking at well-being and health, we're looking at opportunities to be healthy. That is, what about our lives and the context that we live in make a difference for the opportunity to live to an older age or avoid disability or stay out of the hospital and these are completely uh, important perhaps as important as our genes maybe more so some of these factors are social constructions that you see all the time why is it that someone with a one skin color uh, lives a shorter lifespan than someone with a different skin color why does education matter for our chances to reach healthy old age? Why should something like literacy make a difference? But even beyond that, we can think about what are called the social determinants of health. These are non-medical factors, but are strongly related to health and make a big difference on how you'll do if you do develop disease. Things like food security, or housing stability, or access to medical transportation, or reliable utility service, or feeling safe in a home or a community, or having access to green space and a place to walk. All of these things make a huge difference for our well being and our ability to thrive. And that's what BCHS is about, really. We're interested in. If we change one of these social determinants, what kind of benefit do we get in a health outcome? And our faculty are very engaged in this area through behavioral intervention research, through uh, social epidemiologic studies, 
and even increasingly in simulation efforts and experiments. Uh, that's our particular contribution to public health. So I hope I've got given you a flavor of the kind of thing we do. I hope we'll get to meet in person soon in a more normal classroom setting. And I wish you the best uh, in your studies here at the Graduate School of Public Health.